Hey what's happening gang, welcome to your 6th Vuex tutorial and in this video I'm going to talk about how we can use mutations to change the data on the stool. Alright then, so for the sake of this tutorial I want to introduce you to Vue.js DevTools which is really good for debugging Vue.js applications especially when you're using Vuex. So all you want to do is go to this link, I'm going to leave it down below and click this add to Chrome it's going to add it to your Chrome browser for you. Then once it's installed, if you go to a website which is using Vue.js, then this icon will color green like the view icon and you'll be able to open up the DevTools and click on this view tab at the top. OK, so this uh, pane right here is going to give us information about this application, such as the different components. We have app, then we have product list one, product list two, and we can see the different data we're using in each of these different components. So it's really cool. And we're going to use that in a minute. So once you've got that installed, let us now come over here. And I want to talk about how we'd make changes to our data, which is on the store. How would we change these products? For example, taking one off the price of each item. Well, I guess what we could do is edit it directly. So we could place a button and I'm in product list one component here, by the way, I'm going to place a button right here, first of all, and this button is going to have an event attached to it. And the way we do that is by saying V hyphen on, then it's going to be a click event. And we're going to set that equal to some kind of function or some kind of method that we're going to define down here in a minute. We're going to call that method reduce price like so. And the text is also going to be reduce price. OK, so now we need to define this method right here down below in this component object. So after computed properties, let us come down here and say methods. And then within methods, we want to define a method called reduce price. Now, the aim of this function right here is to edit the data in the store directly and reduce the price of all of the items by one, say. OK, so how would we do this? Well, first of all, this is a function. And inside this function, we can access the state on the store. So I can say this dot state uh, dot store dot state dot products and then we're going to do something with it i'm going to use the for each method right so we can use this on arrays and it cycles through the array and performs some kind of action on each element in the array so each item so each time we go through the array and we cycle through it we get access to that individual item which is a single product right and i'm using a fat arrow function here by the way so we'll add this arrow and then the function itself and what we're going to do inside here is we're going to take that product and we're going to access the price property on that product and we're going to set it equal to minus one of what it already was. So we're saying minus equals, which means take one away from the uh, so we don't need a minus here. Take one away from the current price. OK, so that's what we're doing there. So if I save this now, let's view this in a browser. So now we can see this button down here, reduce price. And if we click on this, we can see it goes down by 0.5, but that's just because we've got the sale items on and it's reducing everything by 50%. So even though we're taking one away from the data, it's actually showing as 0.5, okay? So this is working, it's fine. And it's updating down here as well. And what we're doing right now is we're editing directly the store data. But this is not the best way to do it. And it's not the best way to do it because when it comes to debugging, we don't really know if we're just using it on the front end, which function right now or which method is actually making this deduction. We can't associate it with any method in our application. Yeah, we know ourselves because we just added this right here. But if another developer was to come here, they wouldn't necessarily know. It's not great for debugging this. So what we tend to do instead is use what are known as mutations. OK. And these mutations are responsible for editing the state, changing the data, and they can be tracked. Unlike this thing right here, which is not being tracked, right? Because we're not tracking it here in the uh, development tools, a mutation can be tracked. So as a developer, when we're debugging an application, we can associate or attribute a certain change to a particular mutation. We can see where that change is coming from. So how do we make these mutations? Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is copy this junk right here. 
because we're going to use this in a minute. I'm going to also comment it out because we don't want to make that change anymore from within inside of this component. Instead, we want to define this mutation on the store itself. Okay, so underneath the getters, I'm going to make another property called mutations. This is an object and inside here we can have as many different mutations as we need. Again, we're going to call this reduce price. And again, this takes the state as an argument. We're using a fat arrow function right here. And inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, we want to do this again. We want to change the products. And again, we don't need to say this.store because we have access to the state directly. It's passed to us here. So we can say state.products.foreach, take the product each time around and reduce it by one. Okay, the price. So we're doing the same thing here in this mutation. We're accessing it from the store and we're reducing the data on the state. Okay, now this right here can be tracked in this pane right here. Okay, so it's much better for debugging and just a general good practice when you're developing a Vuex application. So let's save this now. And before this is done, we need to go back into product list one and we need to call that mutation from here. Okay, we need to commit it. That's what we call it, committing a mutation. So when someone clicks on this button right here, they're activating this method. And from here, we need to say, OK, I want you to commit a mutation. I want this mutation over here to fire this reduced price uh, mutation. OK, so inside here, we can come below and we can say this dot store dot commit we're committing a mutation and what is the mutation we want to commit it is the reduce price mutation okay because that's the name we gave to this mutation on the store right here so now this should work the same if we click on this button right here then it's going to fire this events reduce price which is then going to say okay this dot store dot commit a mutation and the mutation i want to commit is this reduce price mutation right here which is going to reduce the price of each item by one. So let's save everything now and let's view this in a browser. I'm just gonna refresh. And now when I click reduce price, it's still working, everything's still fine. But this time, if I go to Vuex, this panel right here and refresh, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna see, as we click reduce price, we can see which mutation is performing that, okay? Now, if I was to comment this out and go back to the old way of just editing the data directly from here. If I refresh over here and then click reduce price, we're seeing we're not tracking it over here. We don't know which function or which method is reducing the price. We only see that and it's only tracked when we use this method instead. And in fact, I want to show you something else. If we go to the store and we want to use strict mode, we can say down here, strict is true okay if we're in strict mode when we're using vuex then it won't even stand for this direct editing if i refresh now and then go to the console if i try to reduce the price i get an error it says do not mutate vuex store state outside mutation handlers so it doesn't want us to handle these changes outside of the store so it wants us to do this thing right uh, down here this mutation OK, so again, let's go back now and let's go to this thing and comment it out again. So that instead we're committing a mutation. Refresh over here. And this time, if we reduce the price, we're not getting any error whatsoever. And we're also able to track the state in this view pane as well, which is really cool. So that's why we use mutations to edit the data on the store rather than editing it directly from a component.